What's going on everybody? My name is Greg Peters and for the first time ever on the Car Passion Channel, we're wrenching on an NB. Now you decided you wanted to come help and... So this fine specimen is a 1999 Miata, also known as an NB1, and it belongs to my boss's son who he gets a little bit crazy. So I've been given a special assignment to ensure his safety on his wild adventures. In today's video, I'll show you how to install a roll bar in your Miata. Today I'll be installing a roll bar from a company called Hard Dog. It's the same brand roll bar that I have in my Miata. When I did my install, it was clean, everything fit right, so I recommended that he get one as well, and I'm sure the install is gonna go just as smoothly, and you guys are about to see it. I'll start with a little prep work by removing the seats, jacking up the car, and removing the rear wheels. Next up is some interior disassembly. It's time to remove the carpet from the waterfall panels, the carpet that's on top of the parcel shelf, the seat belt tower covers, and the seat belts themselves. It's nice to have an interior clip remover for these, but since I can't find ours, a claw hammer actually works surprisingly well. Next up, all this 10 millimeter hardware, all gotta come out. Next step is to put the bar in, but it, it says in the instructions that I gotta find a friend. Hello. Hey dude. You think you can help me with something real quick? How much can you lift? Now you decided you wanted to come help, is that right? On your own terms, I see. Wow, you bail as soon as the work starts. See how you are. The bar is almost in. You can pretty much set it in like this. And it doesn't go all the way into place because you do have to make a minor modification to the parcel shelf. We're just gonna do a little bit of cutting to get the bar fully back into position where it's gonna bolt into the car. The only thing I had to do to get the bar where it is now is unplug and kind of pull some of these harnesses out of the way just to make a little extra room. It's gotta go back a little further. As you can see, this lip of metal is in the way. So I'm gonna make a cut and I'll show you exactly where to do it. I just did one cut straight across up on top and a little cut right here and I'm just gonna try to bang it down so I don't even have to cut that last piece. Now when you start cutting this sheet metal, it gets really sharp, especially on the edges, so just be careful. Uh, I know that's a little bit hack the way I did it right there. The other option is to just cut along this line, which is a little bit more difficult with the snips. You could use a Dremel or a grinding wheel also, but I'm gonna try it like this. we we'll do it to the other side, the same exact cut and see if the bar fits. All right, it fits now. Got plenty of clearance, both sides. Make sure you're not smashing any of the harnesses on either of the pleats. Don't want to bolt it down and then crush some wires and have them ground out. Now you got taillights that don't work and who knows what else. And before you get to do any drilling, you have to 
bolt the bar in place at the seat belt towers so it will be positioned perfectly. Because if you just leave the bar loose when you're drilling, you could drill one side, the bar could move a little bit and you drill the other side and then nothing will line up. So bolt it in at the seat belt tower. First thing you do is put the seat belt back in. Use the new bolt that came with the roll bar to secure the bottom of the seat belt because now you have to go through the mounting plate and the seat belt so it's got to be a little different bolt that's it right there and unfortunately you can't get a socket on it so you just have to wrench away don't tighten this up all the way yet leave it a few threads loose because you're gonna have to do the top mounting bolts as well and the bar might have to shimmy around a little bit to get those started the bar is it's bolted in but it's still loose you have a new spacer that comes with the kit that's gonna drop in here. Something cool about the newer kits is they come with a new bolt that runs through here. You used to use the factory bolt and you'd have to drill out the hole in this tab in order for it to fit, but this one comes with a new bolt. You do wanna put this little silver uh, dish looking ring on and that's gonna hold the trim clip once we're done with the install. Just gotta get this started. You might have to move the bar around. I think that's started there. Perfect, now just get it barely started, a couple threads, and then get the other side started. Now we have four bolts holding the bar in place, that upper seat belt tower bolt, and the lower one. The bar is super solid, not going anywhere. Now it's time to drill some holes. I'm gonna do the easy ones first. Piece of cake. Now drop in your bolts. Underneath the car, you'll see where the bolts came through. Take the angled backing plate, slide them onto the bolts, and then put on washers and nuts and tighten them down. And that's what it will look like when you're done. I'm gonna do the other side and then we will drill the trunk holes. Now in order to drill those holes right there, most instructions require a 12 inch drill bit. And I use that word require loosely. Now I'm not gonna lie, I've done less ghetto things than this in my lifetime, but I think it's gonna work. We got an electric impact, we got an extension, we got some Duck Dynasty duct tape taped into a socket. And that is my 12 inch drill bit. I'm gonna give it a try and see if it's gonna work. So my strategy is to drill a smaller hole than I need, and then I'm gonna go underneath the wheel well and drill the big hole up from the bottom. Well, that didn't go as planned. Okay, new plan. That wasn't my invention's fault. It was because I was drilling at an angle and you should never drill at an angle, but sometimes I do dumb things that I'm not supposed to do because, you know, uh, sometimes they work. But that time it didn't, obviously. So, so now I use this bit just to punch a couple holes in the parcel shelf, which just so happened to be right above the holes that I need to drill. So now I'm gonna do basically my same idea and put an extension through there with the stepped bit on it, and I'm gonna punch my holes. Like idea worked much better than the last one. Now that I got the pilot holes drilled, I can drill the main ones from underneath the car. Super easy. Once you drop the bolts in, don't forget the backing plate, just like the front. It's very important to remember these. This helps the bar not rip out of the chassis in the event of a rollover. It helps distribute the load over this entire plate versus just using nuts and washers underneath. That's what the finished product looks like. And once you get that all tightened down, you can put your fender liners back in, put your wheel back on, you are done underneath the car. Now it's time to put the interior back together, but we have to modify a few things. And the first piece is this parcel shelf cover. The more things I cut and modify, I'm kind of remembering when I did my roll bar install, 
it was a little bit different. So if you have a different type of hard dog or especially a different brand roll bar, even though this install is gonna be really similar, uh, it's all about test fitting and cutting only what you need. So don't just cut exactly what I'm cutting and expect it to work perfect with your roll bar. Just like, you know, try to put things on and uh, only cut as needed. There's our cutout, perfect amount of clearance for the bar, and this can be bolted back in. Now you've got to attach the seat belts, and I'm gonna start by taking this rectangular trim piece that goes around the belt and removing it. It won't serve its purpose anymore. Got some hardware here. Gonna take your bolt, take your little dinner plate washer, put it on there, standard washer, little spacer. Then it goes through the belt, into the tower, then a washer and a nut on the bottom. Even after you tighten it down, the belt will still be able to swivel around. Now it's time to modify the seat belt tower covers and the finished product is gonna look something like this. Now there are a million different tools you could use for this, different ways to cut it, different ways to make it look professional. But the gist is you need to cut out the center section. You're gonna end up with uh, two pieces instead of one in order for this bar to be able to clear. Here's the unmodified one. So basically what I do is I cut right here. So this whole little piece gets removed and then I'm making two cuts just like this, I'm cutting out this middle section right here because that's where the bar is gonna be. The more trial and error that occurs here, the better fitment you're gonna get, the better look you're gonna get. Test fit, test fit, test fit. Using the snips leaves a little bit of a rough edge there, but with a fine file, you can shave that down and make it look really clean again. cut a little bit more off the inside because it is rubbing the bar there. Now, that thing fits. It's pretty mint right there. Obviously, it's a little rough around the edges if you're going for a perfect interior, but one thing you can do is take a piece of vacuum line and just split it on one side and slip it onto this edge. It, it looks really trick. It looks factory when you do it like that. But like I said, get creative here. There's a bunch of different things you can do to make it look really clean. After you get your panel cut the way you want, and just go ahead and put your door trim back in. Put your trim piece back on here. Now my strategy for the carpet has always been to just stuff the carpet into place as much as you possibly can and you'll see where it's not gonna fit with the bar. So this little bit of carpet that won't be able to go down, I'm just gonna take this, make a couple cuts right here. Now that's exactly what I wanted right there. The carpet goes right around the bar. No extra cuts, almost looks factory. Well, that is how you install a roll bar in your Mazda Miata. The install is pretty similar for anything 1990 to 2005 with just a little bit of variance in the steps here and there. One thing I forgot to mention in the beginning of the video is not only is a roll bar a good safety upgrade, but it's also huge for chassis stiffening, which is a big part of how the car handles. And bang for the buck wise, I know a roll bar is a little bit of an investment, but when you combine the performance of the chassis with the safety and the cool looks, it's really a no-brainer. So get out there, get yourself a roll bar. Now you know how to install one. No excuses. I will see you in the next one. Peace out. Back from the dead.